This project started as an example piece I did for my 8th grade art class. I used a pastel drawing that I had done of a Dilophosaurus a few years ago as a base for my cardboard head. I added a chicken wire neck and would end up covering the whole thing in paper mache. I bulked it out with a lot of wadded up paper towels and masking tape. Then I covered the whole thing in paper mache. Unfortunately, I couldn't keep the tongue flailing out like that. Most theropods had a weak hyoid bone in their throat, which means they probably couldn't have raised their tongue above the roof of their mouth. Kind of like a modern day alligator. The teeth were made out of super sculpey. In 2020, a paleo artist named Brian Egg published a video that sort of revolutionized the way a Dilophosaurus's head looked. One possibility he proposed was a keratinous covering for the head crests. As it turns out, nobody really knows at this point what shape the head crests took, so we're allowed a little bit of artistic liberty here. made some eyes out of resin. For the skin, I used some DAS air dry clay that I had laying around. I didn't realize that it was paper based, but it turned out to be a great way to cover paper mache and give it detail. As best I can tell, the jury is currently out regarding whether Dilophosaurus had feathers. I chose not to give this one feathers, maybe just for nostalgia's sake. In fact, I veered a little farther toward the lizard side by giving it iguana spines on its neck. I'm not a professionally trained paleontologist, more of a paleontology enthusiast, so I don't know exactly how phylogenetic bracketing would factor into this, but the impressions of scaly Carnotaurus skin hopefully adds a little bit of plausibility to this interpretation. In any case, you can imagine this dinosaur has feathers on its body if you'd like, with a bald head like a cassowary. I had decided from the get-go that this Dilophosaurus was going to be blue. Not sure why exactly, except that I think the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus had made a big impression on me. I don't think it's even blue, but for some reason I'll always remember it being blue because of the lighting of the scene. I'd like to give a special thanks to Dan the Monster Man of GourmetPaperMache.com for both inspiring this project and for giving me some helpful advice regarding mounting the head on the wall securely. Thanks for watching.